Hey guys, here I am back in Los Angeles visiting Rosen Sound. Last time I was here, we got a tour of the uh, facilities. Um, this time I'm gonna check out the cabin music studio. So, I'm gonna knock on the door here. And here is Eli. What's up? How's it going, man? Good to see you, man. Yeah, you too. Yeah, welcome back. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, man. Um, so here we are back at Rosen Sound. I know last time I was here, there was lots going on. Yeah. You can see you've got all types of stuff as, as always here. Definitely full in here. Um, studios this way. Studios this way? Yep. Let's check it out. Yeah. So like, you know, with most cabins you have to like walk through the woods. Right. With this cabin you have to walk through the wood shop. Ah. So, we go through this hallway, through this door, suddenly. We appear in the cabin itself. It's almost like a... And there is Rob Rosen. Hey, good to see you again, man. Yeah, good Welcome to see back. you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so this is the cabin. When I was here last time, it was uh, just a big room. Yeah, just a big echo chamber. And then it went through another sad iteration before we decided to take everything out and then redo it. Okay. <laughs> so then now this is what we have, which is substantially better than before, I'm sure Eli would agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this is a. And that was thanks to our space. good friend uh, Eli Epstein. Mm -hmm. Epstein. Mm -hmm. Epstein, man. Epstein. Yeah. <laughs> Photo call. Music. Yeah. Photo call music. Yeah, he's, he's a, our boy. Yeah. He, he designed the room for us and. Uh, can't, okay. can't think of enough. Yeah, absolutely. So, what do we have in here today? I mean, you've got tons of stuff. Um, why don't we go through some of the pieces you've got? Uh, oh. My alarm reminding me to uh, check my list. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> this to do list. What's number one thing to do today is this video. Absolutely. Uh, so, we have a little bit of everything. Um, you know, everything from all your standard and some rare polysense to. Uh, a lot of rare and a lot of standard monosense and modular gear. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an awesome Yamaha CS80 over here, and then of course to round out the room, we've got the Hammond Oregon surrounded uh, by some cool things. The SY1, it's a newer thing that I've gotten. Very nice. I really love. It's like a kind of a one voice GX1 kind of deal. Uh, the Prophet 10, which we thought would end up being kind of a uh, a staple of the room, has now succumbed to being a kind of a specialty thing that we pull out when we need okay yeah so starting this corner here we've got some juno 106 you see here there's the juno 60 below that the uh moog memory moog and of course the classic roland jupiter 8 yeah oh beautiful and what do we have on this one here dx7 to fd um oberheim expander here the ob8 and the OBX on the bottom. You guys have a particular preference between the two? They're so different. Yeah. It's very hard to, uh, you can't really play favorites. You can play favorites between an OB8 and an OBX, say, mm -hmm. but between those two and an X, you can't play favorites. Yeah. Though people try to. Right on, here's the CS80. Beautiful. Showroom piece here, guys. Oh, yeah, this is uh, when you learn a sense that people come in and say, oh, I've never seen one in real life. I just have the Arturia plug-in. <laughs> in this wall, we've got a bunch of monos, yeah? Uh, and this modulars. This is like the modular slash uh, sequencer style stuff, I suppose. So we have the Sysil 100Ms. Uh-huh. It's a favorite of mine. Didn't think I'd love them as much as I do, but they're just so cool. Uh, they're super clean. They're almost like analog soft synths in a lot of ways. Really? They're super clean, super acidy, and uh, they're just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, you have the uh, ARP 2600. Yes, the legendary ARP 2600. And then next to that, we have a little Euro rack set up that our friends at Analog Haven helped us build to mm -hmm. complement all the vintage modular. Uh, there's not a lot of sound generating stuff in there, as you might notice. Right. Um, a lot of sequencers, um, some effects, a little drum box, and a piston Honda, which I love. Um, and then uh, next to that, we have the Synthi A. Um, I wish it was an AKS, but alas, uh, <laughs> all eBay had to offer was this awesome rust bucket Synthi A, <laughs> which is now fully working, though it's still missing a knob yeah. or two, actually. Um, but it's an awesome piece, uh, Back from the Dead. Literally was underwater. Really? It lives in here. Wow. Oh. And then under that, we have uh, some other cool stuff. Some Oberheim mini sequencers over there. Um, SH-101, you know, which is great for sequencing and for sound. And we just kind of pull it out when we need it. Arturia Keystep, great controller. Mm -hmm. 
And then it looks like we have a TX7 and the 100 4 voice controller under that. Right. Very nice. In this uh, rack here, we've got Moog Prodigy up the top. Yeah, that's another more recent purchase, surprisingly. Um, and then below that, the source. Yeah. Which is really cool. That actually used to belong to uh, Plas Johnson, who uh, was the saxophone player on the, uh, the Pink Panther. Oh, really? Yeah. I bought that from uh, his family. Cool. Along with the memory mode. Not the one that's in here, though. Right. Um, below that's the mini Coric. Uh One of those synths that we got one in for repair, and then I had to have one. So, mm. there it is. And, and then below that, the Overhead 4 voice, of course. Yeah. So this is uh, one of your personal favorites, right? The 4 yes, voice? Yes, absolutely. It's, yeah, my dear 4 voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I see here as well, we have the uh, Pro 1. Yeah, that's a Pro one that's been upgraded with a new keyboard and all the cool knob caps from Tex-Mex Vintage Synth. Mm -hmm. uh, and below that's a white Arp Odyssey. Very nice. Which I love. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, a Korg Monopoly. Yeah, the classic. Yes. Beautiful sound, those SSM filters. Oh, yeah. You know? So, uh, so good. And then, of course, the venerable Moog Mini Moog. Lovely. And what is this unit here? That is an EMU modular that's taken a small residency here. Uh, who knows how long it will be here, uh, but it is, it is a very cool system. Uh, the uh, universal active filter is to die for. What, uh, is it 24 dB, 12 dB? I'm not completely sure, and I don't want to sound like a dumbass by yeah. guessing. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But it's a, it's a great filter. Yeah, this is... Uh... Do you know when it was made, or approximately? No, I haven't done enough research on it. Hmm. Oh, it definitely looks interesting. Cool, man. Well, this is great. I mean, it's quite a space in here. It's all uh, nicely uh, laid out and got some acoustics, and guys can come in here, uh, you know, studio musicians, or whatever, and rent uh, the gear, or how does it work if someone wants to record some sounds? They just hit us up, and, and they can come in, and I, I help them run the session. I help them patch everything, or uh, just pull up sounds. Uh huh. Um, yeah, or just you know. Okay, so it's uh, fairly Answer simple. Any questions if they have any, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hourly rates, day rate, lockouts, some things like that. Yeah, yeah, we do it all. All of the above. Yeah. yeah, it's all very negotiable, uh, sort of case by case basis. We just figure it out, and um, yeah, it's just yeah, it's, we're open for business. You know? Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Cool. Um, you know, I actually used to be uh, one of my techs in the shop, and. Uh, I was really getting sick of him because all he did was make awesome sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd stop working and just be like, hey, you got to hear this Juno 106 preset I made. I'm like, okay, well, that does sound great, but get back to work. So then we did this. It was like, man, you know who'd be perfect for making great sounds all day? Eli. <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> Here he is. Very talented yeah. young man uh, right. with a great ear. Absolutely. And I've heard some of your uh, guys' demos uh, online on your own YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, we've got um, your demos for the big guys. Yeah. And do you put those together, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think the first ones were like, Rob got new expression pedals and he had just gotten the Prophet 10. And I think that was the first one I did. And mm. um, Yeah, there's something really special about, about using expression pedal for the, for the filter cutoff. Just having both hands to, to be able to make big sounds with. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I just ended up trying to trying to get to all the big ones. I think I did. I think I did. I did OBX and OB8. I did this this guy. I don't think I did the Jupiter Eight. I think we did, but I think we canned it because we wanted to do it in here. Mm. So we should probably do that. Yeah, so we're gonna make that. <laughs> I got the Trident one sitting in 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 my computer still, just w waiting for a finish. Fin final I think you did the Prophet Five too. I did the Prophet Five. I like that one a lot. I, I have a, a 106 one that I also haven't released yet, but um, in due time. Mini Moog, mm. yeah, you know, I mean, they, and it could all be demoed. It's just like you know, it takes it takes, takes some a time. couple days, yeah, just to like line it up and make all that. It entertaining, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, speaking of um, sounds, I mean, we'd love to hear some of this stuff. Yeah, let's, let's um, jump into should it. We, should we uh, hear some sounds? What do you say? Sure. Yeah, I'll leave you with Eli to uh, show you the good stuff. Okay, man. Thanks. He's we'll see you soon. I right. might stay in here, but I might also walk out. We'll see what happens. Okay.